Jen has been working the front desk at her clinic for about a year, but she's not doing well. She's missing things. She's making mistakes. She's not moving fast enough. You, as her boss, have given her feedback and you've tried coaching her. You like Janet and you think she's trying her best, but nothing has changed. And now you're frustrated. You think, I don't know what to do about this. Don't go away, because in this episode of Your Practice Ain't Perfect, I'll give you three reasons why Janet may be underperforming and what to do about it. Play that catchy music. There are many reasons why an employee might be underperforming. Let's talk about the three that are most common. First, the employee is under-supported. What does that mean? Maybe Janet didn't get a proper job orientation or effective training to do the job. Maybe processes and protocols are unclear, or they aren't written down in a way that can be accessed and interpreted easily. Maybe Janet is being asked to manage a workload much heavier than what she is prepared or equipped for. In each case, Janet isn't being given the time, resources, or training she needs to succeed in the role. How do you know if this is your issue? Ask this question. Has this person been given all the skills, resources, and info she needs to do her job? If the answer is no, then that's not Janet's fault. It's a problem you have to correct if you want her to thrive. Another reason your employee may be underperforming is that they are in the wrong role. When I worked for a large academic medical center, I had people all the time asking me if I could help them get their foot in the door. They were willing to take entry-level jobs despite being grossly overqualified for them. Maybe this is the case with Janet. Maybe she's bored or unchallenged. Maybe the talents, skills, and strengths she naturally possesses aren't being utilized in this job. We all know that plants that aren't thriving often need to be moved to different soil or a different container to thrive. The same thing is true for people. You might have a case of a good person being a bad fit for that job. How do you know if this is your issue? Ask this question. Does this role enjoyably challenge my employee and allow them to do what they do best every day? If the answer is no, then you either need to change the job to fit the strengths of the person or change the person out of that job. Last but not least, Janet may be underperforming because of a lack of accountability. 14 conversations about needing to improve or pay more attention is probably 12 too many. If you have an employee who isn't meeting expectations, but there are never any consequences for it, then don't expect much to change. Here's how it's supposed to work. If an employee isn't performing to expectations, you give them focused, specific, behavior-based feedback. You involve them in a dialogue about why that change is needed, and you invite them to identify their needs or barriers to improvement. If the change doesn't occur, work through those other two scenarios I just described. Are they being properly supported, and is the role really right for them? If change doesn't occur following those conversations, then it's probably time to take formal corrective action in collaboration with your HR business partners. When employees aren't meeting expectations, they often get labeled by their bosses as lazy, unfocused, or not smart enough. These are character judgments, which tend not to be true. They also blame the employee for a problem that might not be their fault. Something else might be holding them back. It's up to you, as their supervisor, to figure out what's really going on. That's all for this episode of Your Practice Ain't Perfect. If you liked it, please share it and leave a comment as well. See you next time. <laughs>